everybody. So Desmond is here with us. Warm, warm welcome to you, Desmond. Yeah. yeah. So you can start. All right. So hello, everybody. My name is Desmond. I'm ODC. So I'm so happy to be speaking to us today. Although I couldn't make it uh, to be in Germany, but I'm happy to be presenting virtually. So today I um, want to be talking about um, a serverless approach to, uh, to data streaming using Kafka. So um, let's um, dive in right into it. So it's going to be, you know, um, a talk session. And at the end, I will demonstrate how um, you can run a uh, Kafka, uh, you know, on the serverless and also utilize it upstash Kafka for that. So let's try. So about me, my name is Desmond. I contribute um, open source at uh, Ansible project and the Chaos project. And currently I work as a developer experience engineer at Resilis. And also I'm a technical author and I speak at technical conferences like X. Um, yeah, so let's go to the introduction and objective of our talks today. So today we'll be talking about um, Kafka, an open source uh, stream processing platform designed to handle, you know, real data feeds. Uh, you know, it has been widely adopted in many applications, um, applications that are data intensive, um, applications that are, you know, events intensive, right? So we'll be looking at Kafka. We'll be looking at, you know, serverless technology, you know, what is serverless technology? It's still like cloud computing, but um, this situation, you don't have to manage the whole um, cloud resources yourself. Everything is being handled, you know, by the providers and you just focus more on building instead of managing cloud resources yourself. So that's the summary of uh, serverless technology. You're, make, you're still making use of servers, you're still making use of all those um, cloud resources, but you don't manage them, right? Then we'll also be looking at uh, Upstash Kafka. You know, the same way we have uh, Apache Kafka and the rest. So Upstash Kafka is built on Apache Kafka, right? But then it's like a managed serverless Kafka service that simplifies deployment and management of Kafka clusters. And it's also like auto scales offer you like pay as you go pricing model and it helps you to reduce operational overhead. So the objective we understand the need for real time data streaming and we have like an overview of Apache Kafka itself and the core components. Then we we'll also look at serverless technology. We we'll look at Upstash and how what solution Upstash is um, bringing to the table. And then we'll also do like a little demonstration for that, right? So, um, yes. So the need for data streaming, right? So let's even um, backtrace to why do we need to, you know, stream data as an app? Why do we need to? Um, because um, most of the times, applications nowadays, they have like, share amount of data generated by human activities, by, you know, different events happening in the app and millions of people are using these applications, right? So the need for data streaming, we, we, we can't handle all the data synchronously, right? There's needs for, you know, an asynchronous solution that is robust and that can, you know, process this volume of data. So this is the need, one of the needs, um, that make a, a Kafka like a good solution, right? And then there is also like varieties of data as those data that are coming in, they include varieties, there are different varieties, right? There is this logs, there is this transaction, there is this uh, interaction, there is sensors from uh, IoT devices, like a lot of them, right? So, and there's also the velocity, you know, these data, they come at various speeds and, it needs to be processed at that speed they are coming from. Now, the importance of a scalable data streaming solution like Kafka, so they help with a real-time data processing 
So as the data are coming, the speed with the velocity in their volumes, it is also being processed in real time, right? So it has many use cases for fraud detection, real time analytics, monitoring, and you know, alerting. And it's also like a very efficient to manage large volumes, like handling high throughput. So you, you won't even um, notice that, you know, um, these data are much because it has the capacity of handling like such volume of data. And also there is low latency. So um, you there will be like a minimal lag or delay between uh, processing and handling these data. And also flexibility and scalability, the ability to you know scale up or down based on your workload demand without um, you know manual intervention. So these are the modern data challenges um, that requires modern data solution using Kafka, right? And let's um, let me introduce you guys to Apache Kafka. I know most of us might be familiar with Kafka already. Most of us might have used it, um, you know, in one project or the other. But in case you don't know, so Kafka is a distributed um, streaming platform that acts as a high throughput port tolerance message broker. So what it means is that you know Kafka helps you um, manage and distribute uh, you know events or data coming in from your app to other sources, right? So let's say you have um, a microservice application an application that consists of different services that are individually running on their own. And they need to talk to each other. They need to send data across to each other. And these data are coming in their volumes and they are coming at a high speed in their velocity. So we need um, a technology that help process these data in real time such that the time it uh, takes for these data to move from this service to the other service is almost like in real time. You won't notice that it is being transported, right? Yeah, so that is Kafka. So um, so, um, so Kafka has this, uh, what they call, publish and subscribe messaging architecture. So producers publish data streams in form of topics, we'll get to that, and then which uh, buffers are managed, and then consumers subscribe to these topics and receive data streams. So once uh, the producing end of the uh, data stream is generating those data, and uh, there is a consumer side that subscribes to. So these data come in in form, of, in form of topics. So the consumer side can choose to subscribe to any topics that is, um, you know, important to its uh, operation. And then they can be able to be getting like real time feeds on those topics. And it enables them for asynchronous communication between these applications, right? So what are the core concepts of uh, Kafka? So there are topics. So topics are in category of feeds, which a uh, record are published. So let's say, um, for example, there is an application that has a user service. There is um, another application that has, uh, let's say, a blog service. Let's say it's a blog app that people use to read blogs, write blogs and all that. So, and um, I'm subscribed to a particular um, author and all that, right? So I want to be getting like real-time tweet anytime the author publishes an article, right? So um, the, mess, the data coming from the author can be categorized as a topic. And then me that is a consumer on the consuming end, I will be like the consumer that is subscribed to those topics. So anytime, any of the authors I'm subscribed to releases and a new article, I get a notification in real time. Oh, this author has released a new article. So that's what topic means. Then producers is the system itself that publishes these Kafka topics. So the system, the infrastructure, the setup, and then brokers are the server that stores and serves these messages to the consumer. So these are like core concepts you have to be familiar with um when you know working with kafka then we also look at the kafka's distributed uh, architecture so it is designed to handle large-scale message streaming with horizontal scaling right so horizontal scaling means that you can either scale it up or down right in, in, in situations where 
you see that oh you you're getting like more data the volume of data are increasing you can also you know add more savers to your cluster Kafka cluster or in case you want to downgrade you can remove more servers to meet your need so it can be scaled horizontally and for tolerance so there are replication of data across multiple brokers to ensure data availability so there is this thing that you can um you know replicate data i don't know if you are familiar with um, um, most of the sql database you can do data replication uh, yeah the same way you do data replication for your database right you can also do data replication you know, across different uh, Kafka clusters to ensure that these data are available and durable. Then high throughput, it has the capacity to handle large volumes with low latency. So there will be low lagging or low um, uh, little slowness, but um, it is handled um, efficiently that you won't notice at all. So benefits. So benefit of using Kafka. So for your application, at least it will be reliable, it will be durable, it will persist like storage of message for long term retention. So most times, if you check some application, you see um, activities that has happened like years ago are still there. Those events, actions, data are still there. So Kafka also has that um, capability to persist storage for depending on how long you want it, right? If you want short, short term retention, long term retention, it can handle them. Then flexibility. So it is suitable for many use cases like log aggregation. If you want to use it specifically for logging um, events that as they occur in your application, event sourcing, you know, real time analytics and many of them. So someone will ask uh, why Kafka, right? So Kafka, um, because of its robust architecture, it has, uh, you know, it's been like the go-to solution for building real-time data pipeline, right? So um, it's like one of the best solutions out there, and it's something that is worth uh, using because of uh, its uh, architecture, right? Because of the way it was designed, you know, and all that. So it addressed like the modern data challenges, which we looked at earlier on. And yeah, that's like one of the reasons you should use Kafka. So this is um, a, a little architecture drawing about how Kafka works, right? So these are different, um, you know, events, you know, from IoT device, web server logs, uh, user click, um, user activities on applications, social media feeds. So these uh, produces, uh, these are producers, right? So they produce these uh, data and Kafka, you know, is kind of a tunnel that, you know, channels this to consumers. So this Kafka Connect could be any of the connectors, you know, used by any of the applications elsewhere. So maybe another service is using this connector to, you know, listen to these uh, events and data in real time. Or it could be like another application elsewhere. It could be like a streaming ETL. That is for search or data warehouse like elastic search and the rest so this is like um, a simple picture of how it works so the producer produces this data in their share volumes kafka processes them and the consumer uh, plug into kafka using any of this uh, media to listen to these uh, you know um if data as it comes in real time so now let's look at serverless technology, right? As we discussed earlier, you know, it's still like a cloud computing model that lets you build and run application without managing the server yourself, right? So, you know, you it's like renting an apartment instead of buying a house. You still get all the functionality, just that you're not the owner of the house, or you get all the amenities that comes with the house, all the infrastructure that comes with the house. You just pay as you use it, right? And anytime you feel okay, I'm I'm done here, you won't have to pay for it again. You can move to other place. So that's serverless technology. So you pay for cloud services as you use them. You don't get to manage uh, <clears throat> about scaling. You don't get to manage about um, you know load balancing. You don't get to care about um, you know distributing requests requests across uh, you know network across locations and all that. 
So they already help you to manage all those things so that you can focus on building. So a breakdown of serverless technology, no server management, the provider handles the server setup, scaling and maintenance for you. It's event driven. So your code runs in response to your know, specific events, uh, like user uploading a file or an API request. Then it's pay per use. You only pay for the resources you use and the time you use them, which makes it like cost effective. Instead of having a Kafka server traditionally running um, and incurring a, you know, your, a server debt, you can use a pay as you use feature so that anytime you are not using it, it scales down to zero. It turns off the uh, the setup, and anytime a data request comes in, it's spin up back automatically again, which makes it a very good uh, model for use so that you only pay for what you use. And auto scaling, so it automatically adjusts to the number of running instance. Say you have a thousand users today, and in a few months you increase to 10,000 users, and that's like influx of data. So serverless technology, you don't have to bother about adding servers by yourself manually. They help you to do all those things. So yeah, so even though it is called serverless behind the scene, it's the same involved like servers, but you don't take care of them. The providers help you take care of that. And yeah, so benefits are reduce the operational overhead, like I said. So you don't have to manage infrastructure. RAM. You don't have to manage any setup. So it allows the developers to focus on code and business logic. Then cost efficiency, you only pay for what you use. Scalability, it handles a workload automatically, scaling up and down as needed. So why go serverless? So because serverless technology simplifies the deployment and you know management of application. So if you are a startup and you are looking to launch quick and early, if you are trying to you know ship out um, a version one as soon as possible, and or maybe you don't have the uh, the human resources or team resources to you know gather experienced engineers and know how to handle traditional Kafka setup. Um, serverless technology is like a good use case for you and not it also like help you to manage cost help you don't have to worry about scaling you don't have to worry about many things and that's like a good reason to you know use serverless you just have to focus on building your application focusing on code and business logic so now challenges with traditional uh, kafka deployment so the it, it it is complex and time consuming. The setup is complex, time consuming. Then maintenance, including a software update, security patch, hardware management, right? Those are you know, setup and maintenance um, um issues that you can experience like running Kafka traditionally. Now cost and complexity. So depending on where you are, you know, hosting the um, you know Kafka um, server. So you'll be incurring costs, you know, whether people are using it or not, as far as the Kafka server is always on. Because if you are, if you are using a server that is not uh, using a serverless architecture, you know, it will always be running, right? So it will be incurring costs. And then complexity in managing and optimizing the resource of utilization as well. So for example, you want to scale up, you want to scale down, you have to manually do other things, right? Okay. Then there is potential for over provisioning or under provisioning, right? Serverless helps you to maintain that equilibrium for whatever influx of data is coming in. It matches that by providing exactly the amount of resources you need. But traditional, you you might there might be a mistake. There is a potential for provisioning uh, too much or provisioning so little resources that can handle your setup. And for resource allocation, um, there are difficult here yeah, predicting okay, how many resources will I allocate to this particular server, you know, because you know, it's you can never know it's based on you know calculations and you know sometimes we, we are humans we make mistakes. So the traditional deployment of Kafka requires like significant effort in infrastructure management and scaling. You know, it leads to increased cost, complexity, and it can be a barrier to efficient data streaming. If if you don't have um, if you don't have the uh, you know the resources, human resources, or people that know knows how to handle this uh, setup, 
very well. People that know how to handle the scaling down, the scaling up, the uh, you know, resource allocation thing very well on your team. Uh, you might uh, have issues, um, you know, working with Kafka, right? So these are some of the challenges with the traditional, you know, Kafka deployment. Now let's talk about Upstash. So, um, sorry. So Upstash Kafka is a, a serverless data platform, uh, you know, that provides managed Kafka clusters with seamless integration into serverless architectures. You know, it has this HTTP-based APIs that enables the access from serverless uh, technologies, edge functions, you know, and it supports like a lot of standard clients that uh, uses Kafka protocol, right? So the key features is that it's a managed service, so it simplifies the deployment and management for you, pay as you go pricing. So it, it, they have like a, a, an, a an open source version that you can use for free, you know, although it has a limited, uh, Kind of data you process with that one but if you want to if you handle like large volume of data it offers a, a pay as you go pricing that uh, you just have to pay for what you use right pay for the resources you use then simplifies scalability it scales automatically handle the workload without manual intervention and it supports like a a number of uh, Kafka clients are protocol like uh, the Apache Spark, Apache Flink, Clickhouse, Decodable, Keys, and the rest. And also it allows a serverless and edge functions integration, right? So you can use Vessel Edge Function, Cloudflare, AWS, uh, Lambda. And I, I didn't add this one in the slide, but you can, it also like supports a, 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 a large number of connectors from database connectors, like uh, for MongoDB, Postgres, MySQL, uh, name them. So to any other connectors uh, that uh, you can think of. So it also supports like a, it also like language agnostic, like it supports different programming language. You can use it in any programming language you want. So that's it about uh, um, Upstash Kafka. And so this is like a, an example of what someone did with the upstash. So this is a, a UR shortener app. So this is the admin, this is the end user, right? So when the um admin is the person creating the URL, right? So you want to shorten a long URL to store a, a, a short URL. So they will put in the long URL, it will store in Redis, right? So and to generate the minified version of it and the end user will visit those short URL and it will hit the Redis uh, bucket to get the, the real one that it redirects to. But then you want to get analytics on how many times people are clicking this endpoint. This is my link, right? So this is where you store all the click events in Kafka and you can you know visualize them using a uh, tool like materialized to see like a real-time traffic analysis going on in your application. So this is a, a good example of, so the more this data inflows, so data inflows here is like a click event coming in. A million people are clicking on those links, a thousand people are, Kafka handles this event synchronously, store them um, in, in the server, and it, you can use, you cannot use a consumer, right? So this end user, as they are, um, you know, as they are make as they are clicking these uh, links, they are kind of producing this uh, Kafka, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kafka uh, messages. Yeah, Kafka messages, or they are subscribed. They are generating these topics. Uh, yeah, exactly. So now this um, materialized view is you can use it now to subscribe to these topics. Okay, let's say the topic you can name it the um, traffic, right? And uh, click traffic. So as they are generating these uh, messages on this topic, you will now use materialize to uh, consume that uh, uh, you know that uh, topic and listen to that topic and see how many people are clicking, how they are clicking, from what websites are they clicking on this uh, you know uh, on this uh, link and all that stuff. So you can use it for real time data analytics. So so how how does Upstash Works so it's it's very simple. 
um, it, uh, it, it have a control center like a console, like every other serverless platform, you know? And so, I, I, like I said earlier, at the base, it works with Apache Kafka under the hood, but then with a serverless architecture, which means they provision the servers for you. You don't have to worry about it, right? And um, it's a managed Kafka, so it produces, uh, give you the provision to manage your cluster, you know scalability redundancy like you can multi manage multiple servers without you having to put in any, any work right and it still uses producers the kafka topics and the consumers just like apache kafka itself so and it also have a traditional component like schema registry you know if you want like have a central repository for managing data schema used within your topics Let's say you just want to make sure data consistency um, and like this, the data coming in matches a particular schema, right? You can use schema registry to set up that. And there are you know, different connectors, like I said earlier, different data source. You can ingest data from external system and you can also send to different other destinations using these connectors. And, you know, it keeps like evolving but the core concepts still remain providing a user-friendly serverless interface um, for using Apache Kafka itself. So that's how Upstash works. So, and these are the benefits, you know, I've, I've mentioned this over and over. So it, it simplifies the management for you, right? The setup, the configuration, the maintenance, you just create a cluster, create your topic, and then you can either through their SDK or their API, you can you know be sending uh, uh, um, data and the reading data from the cluster, right? And automatic scaling, of course, you don't have to manually configure or uh, that upscale or downscale, um, right? Then it has a built-in monitoring, so you can you can see how your cluster. Is being uh, used. You can see how the inflows of data, you can see any kind of analytics, right? You want to check the health of your cluster, um, you can uh, use this uh, built in monitoring uh, dashboard for it. It reduces operational costs for you, I've said it before, by eliminating uh, in server management, offering you of automatic scaling up and down as your application needs. And, you know, all that. Uh, Reducing the operational overhead associated with traditional Kafka deployment is help you reduce costs and it help you to focus on development, writing code, writing business logic instead of getting bogged down in infrastructure management. So these are benefits of you know serverless Kafka, and I I will do a, a short demonstration of uh, how this thing works. So I created this. Um, I created this. Uh, I created this uh, microservice app, right? So it has like um, I don't know if you can see my screen clearly, but it has app one, app two, and it has a Docker Compose file which allows me to run the two application in a container. And so app one is the one that. So if you check the index file for app one, so okay, I've already opened that. So if you check the index file for app one, you see, um, you will see where I am, you know. So this is a, uh, this is where I'm, I'm setting up Kafka using Kafka JS, and this is where I'm kind of creating an instance of Kafka here using my, you know, username, password, my Kafka server URL. So. I set up my producer here. I connect to the producer. And then this is an endpoint that I, I want when someone hit this endpoint, it will transfer this data to another app, a microservice, which is app two. So app two is listening to this uh, topic. So it will transfer it to app two using this producer.send. So it contains the topic and the message I'm sending. So the message I'm sending is basically this uh, request.body, right? So request.body has the, it has the message I, yeah, this is the message request.body. So I want to send whatever request 
account, send whatever request that is coming to this uh, second service to handle it using Kafka, right? So um, this is where I'm running the um, app, uh, the app one. Then app two, app two has a, a look. App two also have a, a Kafka instance set up, right? And then I configure a consumer. I call the consumer user group, right? So I have a MongoDB connection here and a MongoDB schema for creating a user here. So I want to whatever um, that is coming from app one, I want to use it to create a user. So the data coming here is name, email, password, and we can use um, the registry I talked about earlier to make sure that whatever that is coming from app one matches the schema. Although I'm not doing it in this uh, uh, small demo, but yeah, it's something you can do, you know, to make sure that, okay, whatever is coming is name, email, and password, and nothing more, nothing less. So this is where I'm subscribing to the topic. And uh, this is where I'm running. Okay, I'm using the message. I'm utilizing the message from coming from this Kafka server based on the topic I subscribe to, right? So, and what I'm trying to do here is, you know, pass the um, object coming here as a JSON and use it to create a user in my MongoDB database and it's saved. So um, I'm going to run, I'm going to run this using, um, you know, Docker Compose. So when I run Docker Compose, it should start the two app. The first one runs on port 8080, the app one. And the app two runs in, uh, I think, 881. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now my console says app A is running, producer connected to Kafka, and app B is running, it's connected to MongoDB, it's connected to Kafka, and it's subscribed to the topic called serverless. Right. So before we uh, run any tests, so let me show you as well. Let me show you. Um, the dashboard for you know upstash. So this is um how the dashboard for upstash look like. So um this is a uh, this is upstash has different uh, you know services they provide. They provide Regis service, Kafka, vector database, and the rest, right? So this is where if I want to create a topic, I come to this place. So I've already created one called serverless, right? I can create a new topic here add the name, add the partition count. I can add uh, the cleanup policy if I want to delete it after a particular hour. So the retention hour here is one week. The retention size is 256 MB and it can be higher based on um, your plan. I'm on the free plan, right? And the mass message size is one MB. So this is how you can create your topic, you know, uh, from the from the landing page, you can just click on create a uh, create account to come to this console. You just have to, I signed it to my GitHub. It's very easy. And I come to this console where I created like my first um, Kafka, you know, cluster. So I've created a topic. And if you go to usage, you will see the monitoring aspect I talk about. So it shows me how many message produced, how many consumed, right? It shows you like your throughput. Right, uh, it shows you your data size, it shows you our connection counts. So these are the analytics that uh, are very important for you to see. And this this is the schema registry I talked about. So you can you can create a schema registry here to make sure your data are consistent and data are yeah. So now back to our application. Now that application is running, so I want to um from i want to from app one create uh send this request to create a user so e name email password from this postman right so when i run it when i run it it will tell me um message sent to kafka and then if you look at my console here it will tell message received in app two right and it will show all the buffer the values and stuff for the message and then these are this is the past data coming from app one. And then it have saved that data to MongoDB here. So I have from I've sent data from app one to app two to process it and start the database using 
Kafka connection. So it's simple to set up from the console. You just have to copy. So to create an instance of Kafka, you just have to uh, copy your URL provided in the console for you. So yeah, so you go to details, you see your, this is the endpoint, your, your server is already hosted for you. You don't have to, then your username is here, your password is here. They even have like a snippet code for you to, you know, get started up and running in Java, Node, Python, Go, C Sharp. And they even have like the REST API version. If you want to use REST API, like call, fetch in JavaScript, or if you want to listen to this uh, topic via webhook, you can also use this, right? So this is um, all about um, um, Kafka. This is all about the short demo. And I think, um, so conclusion, right? So what are like the key takeaways? So we have understand the need for scalable real-time data streaming, right? And we've explored Apache Kafka, the concepts and the benefits. We have explored the serverless technology, the architecture, why it is important, right? We have also um, learned about Upstash Kafka and we've learned about the benefits, which are simply operational simplicity, cost efficiency, and auto scalability. And final thoughts. So um, Upstash and Kafka is, it empowers the developer to focus on building applications without worrying about infrastructure management, without worrying about server setup, and the future of data streaming. So leveraging serverless technology, you know, you have you get to um, have a Kafka clusters or servers that runs serverlessly, you know, that even supports edge um, um, computing, right? So your your data streaming can be distributed closer to your users, uh, you know, closer to their locations and all that. So um, that's the conclusion, and I hope you learned a lot. And I hope you um, have questions yes. for me. So thank you very much. Thank yeah, you thank very you. much. Thank you, yeah. Desmond. Mm -hmm.